we tell whether a relationship that we encounter is linear or exponential? In a linear relationship, we're repeatedly adding the same amount. Another way to understand that is to say we have a constant rate of change. If we're looking at a table, we see that if every time we go down a row we add the same number to the independent variable, every time we go down a row we add the same number to the dependent variable. To put that a shorter way, the change in the independent variable is constant. So here's an example. Suppose Bill has $450 in savings and each week he puts $10 into savings. So our independent variable is the time, number of weeks, and our dependent variable is Bill's savings in dollars, of course. If we make a table, we start out with $450 in savings, and then every time we add one week, we add $10 in savings. Another week, another $10 in savings. The wording that tells us that this is going to be linear is wording that tells us that each week he adds the same amount to his savings. The thing that tells us in the table that this is linear, each week we add the same number. What's our linear equation going to be? Bill's savings equals the starting value plus the rate of change times t. Okay, that's linear relationships. How are exponential relationships different? How can we tell that they're different? In an exponential relationship, instead of adding the same amount, we're multiplying by the same amount. It's not the rate of change that's constant, but rather there's a constant multiplier. If we have a table, we see that we multiply the dependent variable by the same number in each row when we add the same number to the independent variable. Notice that there's a lack of symmetry here. We're adding to the independent variable and multiplying the dependent variable. Another way to say this is as we move down rows in the table, the ratio of the rows is constant. Remember, change describes an additive relationship. Ratio describes a multiplicative relationship. So let's see an example of an exponential relationship. So suppose Bill has $25 in savings, and he makes a plan where each week he'll save enough to have 1.2 times as much in savings as he did before. So again, our independent variable is the time in weeks, and our dependent variable is the amount of savings. What do we see in the table? At the beginning, he has $25. After one week, he has, let's see, 1.2 times 25. After one week, he has $30. After two weeks, he has $36, and so on. Every time we add one to the number of weeks, we multiply his savings by 1.2. Let's go one more week. We get 43, 20. But we just continue in that pattern. What does our equation look like? His savings is the $25 he started with times we're multiplying repeatedly by 1.2 and the number of times we're multiplying is the number of weeks. In the story, 
the wording suggested we're repeatedly multiplying. Each week, we'll have 1.2 times as much. In the table, we see we multiplied by the same number. If we just met this table, if we're given a table and we want to decide whether the relationship is linear or exponential, here I'm just going to call the variables x and y because they don't represent anything in particular. Well, we notice that the changes in x are constant in both tables. In both tables, we'll calculate the change in y. So let's see, here we added 7. Here we added another 7. Here we added 12. And here we added 16. Calculate the change first, because change is easy. This is constant. So here we're looking at a linear relationship. So our equation would be y equals the starting value plus the change times x. But 12 and 16 are different. This is not constant. So next we calculate the ratio. What do we have to multiply 36 by to get 48? Using the calculator. 48 divided by 36, make it a fraction. Here we multiplied by 4 thirds. And what do we have to multiply 48 by to get 64? 64 divided by 48. Oh, that's the same, make it a fraction. That's 4 thirds again. This is constant. So the relationship we have here is exponential. What's our equation? y equals the starting amount, 36, times the multiplier, 4 thirds, to the x power. Just to make sure that really worked, 36 times 4 thirds the second power really does give me 64.